Hi everybody. Welcome to Healing with Numbers slash Healing with Love. Today is the 9-9 portal. Here I am. I went back and forth about um, recording today because it is 9 in the morning and it is already hot as balls. So I decided I'm just going to do it now because if I wait any longer, it's going to hit the hundreds today and I don't think I'll be able to record. So we're starting early. We're starting a little early today. And that's okay. So let's see what we got here. Okay, so we're going to start 9-9. <clears throat> what is 9-9? If you think about it, you know, 99 is almost to 100, so it's like you're almost there, right? And then when you reach that 100, it's that new beginning. So this is a time right now where we're completing old cycles and we're stepping into new. So it is the level up. It is the graduation process. So if you guys are ready to graduate, so to speak, um, it is that time. It's that time of year. It is the harvest time. It is the fall. <clears throat> so... What is nine? Nine is the wisest number in numerology um, for very good reason because nine represents all the other numbers. So when you've gone through one, you've gone through two, you've gone, you, you know, so and so and so forth, you get to the number nine. So the number nine has experienced all the numbers. And if you add nine to any number, um, it always reduces back to the original number. So it's almost like a mirror effect. Um, it is the universe mirroring things back to you for learning purposes, for you to learn, for you to grow, for you to expand, for you to level up. I see 99, it's a level up. <clears throat> when you start seeing 99, it is, it is the universe saying, okay, you're almost, you, this is your level up, this is your time. You've learned a lot, you've grown a lot, and here we are. In numerology, the three, six, and nine are the most highly evolved numbers in numerology. So they represent wisdom. They represent creation. Uh, without these numbers, there is no creation. There is no um, inventive ideas. There is no creativity. Uh, so there would be no universe, I guess, without the three, six, nines, right? Okay. So... Uh, here we go. Uh, so nine nine. So let's let's get into the numerology of the actual date nine nine. Okay. So nine is the humanitarian. So this is a time of like not just thinking about yourself, but thinking about others, right? And you know you can't fill from an empty cup. So what do you do? You you work on yourself first, and once you work on yourself, your that trickles down to everything around you. So your cup overfloweth, right, to those around you. So that is the best way. I know a lot of people want to get out there and help, and you can do that once your cup has been full, because if you're trying to, to give up to others while you're on empty, it's counterproductive. So nine is the humanitarian. Um, nine can also come about when you're having issues with family. Um, when I see the number nine, it is enmeshment. Uh, a lot of people don't know what that word is, so it's pretty much when you take, it's like the empath, right? Uh, when you take on the problems and situations of others, um, and it starts affecting your life. So when you when you start doing that, you are enmeshing yourself in other people's lives. Um, instead of focusing on you, now you're kind of focusing on them. And I think a lot of people do this when they don't want to worry about themselves. How do you how do you get yourself out of a depressed funk? You help another person, and then all of a sudden you're not thinking about it. But in the process of doing that, um, you're also pushing these issues and these things to the side, and only to revisit them later. So, like I said, you got to feel from you got to fill up your own cup first. Okay, um, let's see here. Okay, so uh, so one plus so today's nine nine. So one plus eight is nine. So what is the number one? It's a new beginning. So of course that's going to come through. Number eight is the power number. It is stepping into your power. It's that level up, right? It's the entrepreneur. So inventive ideas that will bring you financial abundance. So whatever creative or inventive ideas that you have, it's also the leader. So stepping into your leadership role, your leadership abilities, stepping into your power. Uh, and that reduces back down to nine. So it's nine, nine, nine. Um, level up. Uh, and then so when we add the year 2021, it reduces to the number five. So number five is all about freedom. Uh, it's about adventure. It's about transformation, change, movement, travel. So this is a month where it's time to start having those adventure, you know, adventurous times, right? Getting out there, learning new things, um, being free. So that is what is going on with this 99 portal. Now, there's other things that are happening. It's also, you know, the start of fall and the harvest time where um, 
you know, it's time to reap what you have sown for the past nine months. Uh, so a lot of people would say, you know, nine months represents also the, the fertility, right, of a woman. It is about, um, you know, they plant the seed nine months ago and then in nine months that baby is born. So this could also, doesn't necessarily have to be about babies. It could be about a project. It could be about uh, a creative project, a business project, or anything that you planted um, at the beginning. If you planted seeds of love, uh, nine months ago, seeds of forgiveness, seeds of compassion. That is what you are. That is what we are reaping in this coming fall. Um, so, it's a new season, a new a new time. Uh, things change, right? So, it's interesting that it is a five uh, reduces nine nine plus five it reduces back down to five, which is all about transformation, change, right? So, this is what's happening in the fall, right? Things are changing. Things are falling away. Uh, to make room for new growth. So it's about letting things go, not holding on to things that no longer serve your, your highest good, no longer serve the collective. Um, getting out of the me, 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 and into the we, 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 right? Into the, like us, uh, seeing things in, in the bigger picture, right? So it's interesting, we got some songs that came through. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get into that in a second. Um, the energy that I've been feeling, I guess eight was a, eight was a very interesting month. Uh, August was filled with magic, I guess you would say. Uh, uh, un, unbelievable synchronicities, surreal synchronicities, um, too many synchronicities. And I think a lot of this, a lot of the things that have, have I've discovered on this journey with myself and my intuition is I have the gift of foresight. I didn't understand it for a very long time. I kind of did because I used to always tell people, I told you so. <laughs> Everybody would always say, why do you always say I told you so? I did, I told you so. But I didn't understand what it was back then when I used to say that because I would see things before they happened and I would advise people a certain way and they wouldn't take my advice and then it would happen and then I would say, I told you so. But I didn't know at the time that it was because I had foresight. And a lot of the times I see things, so let's say if I'm, you know, one day, the day before I'm scrolling through Instagram, I will see things around me. Uh, things will pop out at me. Things will flash out at me. And the next thing you know, I go on Instagram and I'm seeing those things that I saw. And for a long time, I didn't understand what that was. I thought it was like synchronicity. Maybe I was connected to a particular person, uh, you know, a soul connection, which yes, we are all connected. But in this case, it was not just soul connection, but it was my foresight. It was me seeing it before it happened. Me seeing it before it was posted. So I think a lot of you guys, your foresight is starting to to awaken. You'll start seeing the number 444. That to me represents foresight. It also represents a lot of other things like uh, teaching and learning, building a solid foundation for the future, practicality, logic. Um, but it does represent foresight to me, seeing things before they happen. and. In my case, it's usually a um, 48 to 24 hour period of I see it and then I see it happens within 28 to 48 hours. But um, everybody is different. Everybody's time frame is different. Um, you can probably see something that's going to happen in the next year. For the COVID thing, I saw it for the whole year before it happened, but I didn't know what it was, right? And it isn't, you know, they say hindsight is 2020. Um, I didn't understand what it was because this is not something that we've ever experienced in our lifetime. So I couldn't put pieces of puzzles together that were like wrong, you know, in my eyes, like, what does it mean? So a lot of this will be happening to you guys. Your intuition is awakening to a point where you are almost thinking you're going crazy and you're not, you're not going crazy. I'd recommend journaling, writing these things down. Um, it'll help you to navigate the journey a little bit easier. It'll help you to understand what kind of intuition you have. So there's clear, clear cognizant, which is clear knowing like, uh, so I have that as well. Uh, a lot of you guys, I, a lot of you guys have all of them. Uh, they're only, they're tuned and honed for as, as, as well as you work on them, as well as you, um, you learn from them, right? So clear cognizant is clear knowing, just knowing things, not knowing how you know them, but they just, it's just there in your, you know, because we're picking up on the Akashic records. Um, the Akashic records can, it's a process that can be changed. It's an ever evolving process. It's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's based on now, right? So the things that you change now will change those Akashic records. And um, this is why like forgiveness and all that is imperative during this time. 
and what else um clear cognizance so clear knowing uh clairvoyance is clear seeing so that's the foresight clear seeing but it's also the third eye right seeing the subliminal programming in things um so let's say uh i'll be reading a a newspaper and it's kind of like if you've ever seen a beautiful mind they made him out to be schizophrenic and crazy but that's really how intuition is so certain words will pop out uh you know while you're reading a newspaper certain words would they'll be highlighted more into your consciousness and and then that's what that creates the foresight like that what you saw is what you're going to be seeing so <clears throat> that's clairvoyance is clear seeing uh clear audience is clear hearing that's when you hear uh messages uh from spirit and it doesn't have to be in your english language okay it does or, or whatever language you speak it it can be tones it can be music it can be um um frequencies uh, a lot of people their ears begin to ring and a lot of people say well that's just tinnitus no it's a different you'll understand it when it starts happening it is a totally different it's almost like somebody is tuning your ears like uh, if you've ever had your ears um, when you go to the ear doctor or the ear nose throat specialist and they they put those little sounds in your ears it's kind of like that um, it lingers it'll go up or down it'll go ee, ee, ee. like it's an actual message now you can't understand it in your 3d awareness and consciousness but you can understand it um, subconsciously your subconscious knows what it is and it'll it's tuning your system clear audience can also be messages like uh, anytime you hear like so I can be having lunch with a friend and uh, somebody next to us will be having a conversation and certain words will will stand out to me um, so clear audience is clear hearing that it's also music radio what else um, clear cognizant clairvoyance clear sentient clear uh, feeling so this is when you feel things um, you ever walk into a room where somebody's been fighting and you feel the tension without seeing anybody fighting you just feel you walk into it and you feel it so that's clear sentience it's also the empath right empaths they feel the emotions of others um, when you begin to master this clear sentience their emotions you have a bear you have like a barricade around you and that emotion bounces off of you you don't absorb it a lot of people, they, when they're first becoming empaths, they absorb this energy and then they, they, they start acting out on that energy. But once you protect your energy and you, you understand how energy works, it almost bounces off of you. You can feel it and you can distinguish it and say, oh, something's going on here, but you're not absorbing it, right? It's like a, it's like, Burp. okay. So, and then there's a, there's a, there's a few other different ones. Claire, I think it's Claire, uh, Orf, Orfi or something. It starts with an O-R-F. Um, and that's clear smelling so some people can smell it can also be that's a that's an offshoot of clear sentience so some people can smell um, you know whether it's cigarette or perfume or whatever the, you're picking up on the scent of the, the vibratory frequency because scent is also a frequency that's why um, essential oils are very they're, they're profound they're profound to work with because they're very powerful to work with uh, especially rose uh, for your heart chakra Okay, I don't know where uh, I was going with this, but I think it was because of the foresight. I started with the foresight and seeing things before they happen. So you're not going crazy. Uh, this is what's happening. You do have strong connections with others, tele telepathy, telepathic connections with others. Um, it has to be clear sending, clear receiving. So the person, one person decides, I want to send you a message and you're going to be the receiver. And that person decides. And, and sometimes it's uh, subconsciously, sometimes it's consciously, but it happens a lot with people that are connected, uh, that have a spiritual soul connection. Okay, so we're going to get to, we're going to start with the songs. I don't know why I was guided to discuss the Claire's. Um, I've, I've made posts about them before, but I feel that a lot of you guys are beginning to awaken all these abilities, and I feel that you needed to understand them just a little bit deeper. Um, you are not going crazy. Okay, so we're going to start with the song. So what was interesting is, um, so I did nine songs since today's 9-9, nine -nine, and four of the songs that started, they were actually repeats from yesterday, which was really weird. I wrote them down, but I'm not, I'm not going to incorporate them in the reading. Um, after I realized that the fourth song, I kind of s reset the thing and started again. Um, but I'll just I'll just name them just in case they mean something to you. Uh, Oxygen by Newfound Glory off the album Coming Home. Uh, so definitely seeing oxygen. Um, the trees emitting oxygen. The gratitude for the oxygen that you breathe. 
Um, number two, Astronaut in the Ocean by Masked Wolf. Interesting. Mask, wolf, oxygen. Uh, that's pretty interesting. And it's Astronaut in the Ocean. If you guys have been... Uh, I'm starting to smell something <laughs> strange. Um, anyways, Astronaut in the Ocean. If you guys have been following my stories, you guys know that I always discuss... Um, the ocean aliens. So I'm seeing um, like a secret space program that's going into the ocean. Um, number three is Seven Years by Sa Salsen. Salsen? Seven Years. So uh, interesting about Seven Years. I wasn't going to dive deep into the songs, but I'm going to get into the number seven here. So Seven Years, uh, our cells regenerate every seven years. So you are not the same person that you were seven years ago. You are a totally different person. Hi, Nim. Um, so the cells regenerate. So you literally are a different person. This is your, your hair, your cells, everything. And coming through with the 9-9, nine -nine, that's talking about a level up, a completion of a cycle, finally moving into something new. You are no longer the person you were in the past. This is your graduate. I'm hearing that song by 30, uh, 530, by Third Eye Blind. Can I graduate? Um, can I look at faces that I meet? Can I get my punk ass off the streets? I've been living here for so long. Can I graduate? So this is almost like I've been living here for so long. Can I move on from here? Can I leave? I've been, I feel like it feels like I've been here forever. It's time for me to move on. And interesting that the song is number four. Number four, as we we're talking about 444, was Forever by Haim. Um, <clears throat> I'm tired of fighting the good fight. If you say hello, then I'll say goodbye. Forever I see you and me. Um, so the number four, almost like feeling like you've been where you are forever and you're ready to move on. And I think a lot of people, um, this is another thing. Uh, people immediately, uh, when they're having a hard time on earth, especially uh, you know, if you resonate as a star seed or anybody, you almost feel like you never belonged here on this earth, but you came here for a particular mission. This is a gift to come here. Um, and a lot of people say, I'm not going to reborn. I'm not going to be reborn. This is my last life. I'm done with it. They say that because they're living in the 3D consciousness of experiencing life here. But when you die, when, you, when you're, this body dies and you do the life review to discuss it, you immediately want to come back because you're like, oh shit. Okay, I, did, I, I missed this. I didn't get to do this. I want to do this over here. And you immediately want to come back. So how you're feeling about life right now is not how you're going to feel about life when you do your life review. Most people that say this is their last life, they don't want to come back, they do come back. And uh, so it's a, it's a much higher vibration, vibrational frequency of returning. Okay, so uh, next, okay, so now we're going to get to the real songs that came through. So the first song that came through was um, When Will I See You Again by Adele. And it took me a minute, and I was like, when will I see you again? You left without a word, not a single word was said. So I'm seeing somebody who, who passed away, right? Uh, sometimes when people pass away, we don't get to say our goodbyes. They just go. And when will I see you again is like in your next life. When will I see you again? And I immediately thought of past lives because it says, Why don't you remember? So he talks about remembering. She wants somebody to remember. Why don't you remember me? Why don't you remember me? And this immediately, I'm seeing past lives. So when we awaken, we begin to remember our past lives, our concurrent lives, right? Our lives in all dimensions of time and space. <coughs> and when we remember, a lot of people don't remember because they're not yet, there yet. They have not awoken yet. So as you're remembering them from their past life, they don't remember you. And it could be frustrating because you're just like, why don't you remember? <laughs> like, I remember. And this is about letting that go and living in the present. Uh, past life connections are all great and fine. Uh, they're beautiful, right? They're real beautiful connections. This represents lifetimes of, of, of deciding that you want to work with that person in another life, another life. And if you're meant to work with this that person from a past life in this life, you will work together. You will remember. Uh, so it's okay if a person doesn't remember because if they're meant to, they will. And if they're not, they're not. And it's living in the present, letting go of those past lives. Uh, not obsessing over past lives, letting go of past lives, let go of past lives. Um, it's really, really loud. 
live now live in the now the connections of now 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 okay um i feel like my face is getting real fuzzy just because so maybe like some crown chakra stuff my face feels real itchy like okay uh adele mm -hmm. off the album 21 i think so the number 21 might be significant uh two partnerships becoming one when two become one i'm hearing that song from the spice girls okay um number two was like a stone by audio slave in your house i long to be room by room patiently i will wait for you there i will wait for you there um like a stone so in the beginning the lyric that stood out to me was cobweb so something about cobwebs or this is like halloween maybe halloween cobwebs or something about cobwebs i'm seeing cobwebs or like a cobweb tattoo but i'm seeing cobwebs and um immediately when i think of cobwebs i think of uh earth and our connections right so what is a spider web when we think of a spider web um so the spider is in one side of the spider web and if something touches the far end of the, the spider web the the spider will feel it no matter how far it is on the other side of this thing because it reverberates that that movement that sound whatever the heck touches the spider web it, it reverberates and it meets the spider so that happens with us as well when uh it, it's like things and actions uh create a shock wave on in the universe so your actions create a shock wave um another thing that stood out to me was and on my deathbed, I'll pray to anyone who will take me to heaven. To a place I recall, I was there so long ago. Um, and once again, that's like past lives, remembering a past life, remembering where you've been in the past. <laughs> I wish you guys could see Frankie, she's hilarious right now. Um, so, and that's when you're on your deathbed, right? And you just start realizing the things that um, you could have done differently and uh, feeling that guilt and shame that, you know, that you don't belong in heaven because of the things that you've done. And this is about letting that shit go because you, heaven is just but a state of mind and you get yourself to heaven by believing that you are there, right? Audio slave, Chris Cornell. Um, number three, Scarlet Begonias by Sublime. Uh, this is about a girl who wears flowers in her hair. <laughs> um, this, the lyrics that stood out to me was, it's about a girl who goes to raves and stuff and she sells all sorts of party favors or something. So this is about that party time, party state, Sublime. But it's about his, like, it's it, to him, it's like his dream girl. She was like, and then it turned out to not be that. Like, all of a sudden, her, the truth starts coming out. And he starts seeing the truth of who she is. And he's like, oh, shit. Um, and then, uh, so number four was Sunny by Newfound Glory, which is interesting because Newfound Glory came through in number one. Um, and sun, the, the word sun has been coming through for a long time. Very poignant to my last post about um, the solar plexus. So the, the song itself is about somebody passing away. I'm sorry, I heard about the bad news today. It's really hard to get through. Um, and people telling you it's okay and everything happens for a reason. And who wants to hear that when they lost somebody, right? We do know that things do happen for a reason, um, but when somebody's grieving, that's the last thing they wanna hear. So maybe um, take that out of the vocabulary when, if you're dealing with somebody with grief. An empty chair at all the tables. Let's see. Okay, so number five. This is an interesting one. Calm Like a Bomb by uh, Rage Against the Machine. Rage Against the Machine, my all-time favorite band uh, of all time. My, my favorite band of all time. Um, I actually, even though I love Rage Against the Machine, I don't listen to Rage Against the Machine often because um, 
I get very passionate and you know if I I create what I speak and if I'm singing Rage Against, Rage Against the Machine very loudly it's like I'm creating that and uh, this song in particular Calm Like a Bomb um, is very poignant it's it's a very deep and profound song and I I um, urge you to look up the lyrics but it's it pretty much just talks about all of us being calm until we're pushed to our breaking points until we're, we're pushed to seeing the truth about things and you know and we're calm until we're like a bomb we, we blow up so not suppressing things um, it's got nothing to do with the song but when I hear it come like a bomb it's like not suppressing things to when you blow up right so bombs are not calm <laughs> um, and it talks about a right to obey and a right to kill so how in some places you know killing you know let's say take take police officers or whatever they have the right to kill if something you know whatever um, I don't think anybody should have the power to kill another human being um, and yeah so anyways that's my own personal thing moving on number six okay this goes along with that I guess sympathy for the devil by Rolling Stones pleased to meet you you get my name ooh, ooh. so sympathy for the devil nobody has sympathy for the devil they all think he's evil they all think this is what about having sympathy for the devil right um, to me uh, I see the devil or the representation of the devil as just another another human being another person another spirit another whatever um, people like to blame the devil for their actions and this and that but that's taking away their own um, accountability for their own actions so having sympathy for the devil takes a lot of heart chakra activity and seeing and seeing somebody and having sympathy for them and this could this you know I, I'm gonna use an example for this um, when my father was murdered um, I had a sympathy for the murderer because it happened when uh, the murderer was drunk and it's one of those things where I'm sure that when he sobered up he realize the consequence of his actions and he has to live with that and so that I have sympathy for that person um, whereas people would be like why do you have sympathy for him that's he's the devil you killed your father but everybody makes mistakes everybody does things in their life and everybody deserves forgiveness and everybody deserves understanding um, even the most horrific of people have a spark of light in them somewhere somehow okay sympathy for the devil <clears throat> uh, number seven, By Your Side, Sade. That song has special poignant uh, meaning for me. You think I'd leave your side, baby. You know me better than that. You think I'd leave you down when you're down on your knees. I wouldn't do that. I'll tell you you're right if you're wrong. Um, so this is about... And I'm definitely seeing somebody who has passed away with Sunny... Um, like a stone on the deathbed um, when will I see you again past lives like somebody that has passed away and they're always going to be by your side no matter what they're always going to be there for you in spirit and make things happen spirit can make things happen spirit can manipulate energy and things um, especially if they're an advanced soul an advanced spirit they can definitely do this and um, they're by your side guiding you and and you're seeing the synchronicities in the signs and sometimes they are they can be overwhelming uh, especially when you when your um ability to speak your mediumship abilities come online and it's almost like okay i get it you are here i get it um let's move on but it's about having gratitude that they you have that connection right okay by your side Shade. Number eight, another song about somebody dying. Lightning crashes uh, by Live. A lightning crashes, an old mother dies. So, uh, lightning crashes. I'm seeing a storm, uh, a solar storm. I'm seeing a storm. I'm seeing lots of storms, which is profound because I have been seeing. I was seeing a lot of flooding uh, in my dreams and stuff, and then I was. I've just been seeing all these states that are flooded right now. So, there's that foresight, um, honoring your intuition, right? giving the message to those who need to hear it so they can make the choices to you know um, move forward from there right so lightning crashes is about a woman who dies giving birth 
it's fun. The angel opens her eyes. Confusion sets in. So um, the angel opens her eyes and the confusion sets in. So this is when she gives birth to the baby. The baby's born and you know, like when a baby is first born, uh, they open their eyes and they're confused. This is the awakening process. So when you begin to awaken, you, um, you have that confusion of what's going on, what is happening, right? So, hi Betty. So uh, the confusion sets in. So during the awakening process, you will have a lot of moments of confusion. And it's interesting that um, the Sympathy for the Devil song came through because in the lyric, he talks about um, the devil is here to confuse you. So, you know, when we take in all these informa all this information, all these conspiracy theories, all this stuff, we become confused about what is true and what is not. What's the truth and what is not. In 5D, all there is is truth. There is no 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 uh, deception in 5D. So when you're vibing in that 5D, you, you you're only getting truth. Um, and so this is why it's imperative to meditate and get and tap into your own inner truth because that's where the answers are. That's where the real answers are. So confusion sets in before the doctor could even close. Oh, I feel it coming back again. Like a rolling thunder chasing the wind Forces pulling from the center of the earth I guess I can feel it <laughs> I can feel it So you guys are feeling something happening This profound something is happening right now From the center of the earth, right? So the song that came through um, The Astronaut in the Ocean, right? The first sequence of songs that came through uh, I was seeing like the depths of the ocean, the depths of the sea, diving really deep into the ocean, uh, something from the center of the earth, something's coming out, whether this is like a volcano or something, something's coming from the center of the earth, expanding outward. And you guys can feel it energetically wise, you guys can feel this energy, you feel something's coming. It's almost like a constant feeling of like, something's coming, where is it? Something is coming, I can feel it. I can feel it. Okay. And the last song was Fuck You, Fuck You Very, Very Much by Lily Allen. Fuck you. Um, look inside your tiny mind and there you... So this is about saying... So it goes with Calm Like a Bomb from Rage Against the Machine. Um, telling people to fuck off, right? Just finally not not holding your tongue anymore and saying fuck you. Fuck your hatred. Uh, fuck your racism. Um, fuck your belief system that is bringing uh, that is um, bringing others down, right? So you know, I'm gonna go back. You know, the Bible. Uh, I talk about this a lot, though it has a lot of profound wisdom. The words in this Bible have been distorted for centuries and centuries and centuries. We don't have one first copy of this. Um, this has all just been rewrote and rewrote by people and, and reinterpreted and reinterpreted. And um, this earth is about free will and freedom. And this book has took away the religion in itself, not just Christianity. The religion in itself has took away people's free will because now they live by this, this book uh, instead of living on their own. So, um, and this is about, uh, you know, and I'm seeing it immediately for like Texas, right? Texas right now. Uh, they banned abortion even if a child was raped by her father she must give birth to that child uh, even if a woman was raped by a stranger she must give birth to that child even though the child is born without vital organs she must give birth to that child even if that child has um, will kill the mother upon birth uh, she must give birth to that child and I think this is a bunch of bullshit uh, that has come from this book um, from my experience of things, the child does not go into the womb until the fifth or sixth month. Um, it does not, and, it, and even then, it's not, the spirit is not in there. It goes in and out. It's kind of just like, just growing. Uh, I might get some backlash for that, but I don't, it's okay. Because this is from my experience of what I've seen in my meditations and what I've experienced from my past life reviews and all that stuff. We're not, we don't go in there until... We decide who are parents, and then the vibra vibrations change. 
Uh, so some, that's why a lot of people have uh, miscarriages and stuff because the vibration changes and they don't, the, the child is no longer aligned with that current vibration and it's like, okay, no, I'm gonna wait till somebody's a better match for this vibrate, this frequency that I needed to come in. So um, to make a woman uh, go through this trauma, make a child go through this trauma uh, is heartbreaking. And the amount of children that are in foster care now uh, you're going to be having a lot more children in foster care with this law and a lot of it's just i don't believe in it so we can agree to disagree okay so here we go okay so we got the songs now we're going to start the the readings okay we are going to start the reading i'm not even sure um what um i i haven't even pulled any cards out yet because i was just kind of just going to kind of wing it kind of go with the flow so i'm just going to go with the flow and see, I'm just going to pull various decks and see what comes through for this 9-9. So my intention here is um, what is coming through this 9-9 portal? What are we releasing, letting go? What are we bringing in, right? The 10-month the, the is going to be this new beginning, this new spiritual beginning, because we learned a lot the past nine months, right? Jupiter expansion. I love Jupiter coming through because Jupiter has been coming through all month for me. So if you guys are um, familiar with, you know, what Jupiter represents, um, optimism, enthusiasm, generosity, benevolence, beliefs, luck, travel. So I was talking about travel at the beginning with the 9-9. So we're seeing travel. Um, I'm seeing lectures, whether you're going to be lecturing or you're going to a lecture, I'm seeing a lecture. I'm seeing foreign cultures, learning new foreign things, whether this is learning a new, new language or um, dealing with people from a foreign culture. Uh, I'm seeing teaching and learning, uh, a pilgrimage of sorts. I'm seeing good po optimistic chances, good chances, uh, expansion, um, leaping into the unknown, exploring the unknown, and you're finding, t untapping your, your potential. I'm seeing dice here, rolling the dice. I'm seeing a rainbow here, which represents wish fulfillment to me, but it also represents the chakras awakening, having that kundalini awakening. Um, I'm seeing a merry-go-round, a merry-go-round. So I like seeing this because, so look at how it goes. It goes up, right? So sometimes you're down, but then sometimes you're up, but sometimes you're down, but sometimes you're up. And that is just the cyclical nature of life and our experiences. So sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down, but know that you will always go back up, right? Until you decide to get off the dang ride. Um, I'm seeing, let's see, um, the number nine. Oh, wow. Oh, my God, guys. So at the beginning of the reading, I was talking about 995. That is what the numbers are right now. They are 99, nine, and then 2021 is five. Here is nine, nine, and five. Nine, nine, and five. So this is a confirmation. Wish fulfillment, a level up. Uh, so amazing things are coming, right? Amazing things. Um, <clears throat> Lady Luck is on your side. Okay, let's see what else we got. I can't get this song out of my head by Lily Allen. Fuck you. Fuck you very, very much. <laughs> it's like um, telling people that you to, to fuck off, right? Just finally saying, I'm, I'm done. I've zipped my mouth for far too long. I think it's time for everybody to rise up. That's why the Rage Against the Machine came off. It's like people are calm until they're like a bomb. Look at that. Number 10, rock bottom. So this is an interesting one. So I feel like a lot of people, the past couple years, a lot of people had their rock bottom. Like they hit this, this, this road where they can no longer go any further. And when you hit that roadblock, it's finally time to level up and climb out of there. So I'm definitely seeing, finally being able to climb out of there. It's the number 10. So 10 is, I was just talking about the number 10 and here it is again. This phoenix rising from the ashes. You went through a shit ton of crap and you're finally saying goodbye to a lot of people. Uh, a lot of things that no longer serve you. A lot of things that no longer serve your highest good. And you are moving into this new spiritual beginning. You're having this new spiritual rebirth. Yes, so with that Jupiter coming through, definitely seeing new things coming. I mean, I, 
there's a lot of a lot of uh, somebody had posted uh, before I get to the rest of the, the, the cards somebody had posted on a group that I follow um, that all of a sudden this week this uh, past few days people were angry they would go everywhere and people were just angry and they didn't know they're like what planetary transit is happening right now that people are so angry and they were looking to the stars for the answers right they were like you know tell me the planetary positions why is everybody so angry and everybody's trying to give an explanation to the planet but sometimes the answers are not way out there sometimes the answers are right in front of your face and in this case I was seeing a lot of people in the US um, millions of people actually that were on uh, unemployment benefits their unemployment benefits got cut off so now they're scrambling they don't know what they're gonna do uh, you know going to look for a job and all that stuff right so you're gonna have a lot of angry people walking around so sometimes it's not the transits and the stars that's happening sometimes it's it's right here in front of you what's happening so um, zoom in sometimes you can zoom out for a higher perspective but sometimes you, you just zoom in and you'll see the answer so if you're experiencing a lot of angry people that could be why okay a new earth oh my god oh yeah so we got the 10 we got the 10 right we represent the spiritual beginning I was talking about 10 earlier right moving from the 9 to the 10 um, the new earth look at that and so I have been seeing this for a while I have been seeing almost the Vesica the Vesica Pisces right uh, separating and so what happens right two things separate you're, we're seeing the division of the world right people one side one side and separating the new earth is separating and even though it looks like it's separating it still separates and it's still one it's still part of the whole so even though it's separate it's still part of the one I think a lot of people forget that um, it's happening keep holding the vision so this new earth is happening um, it takes a lot of uh, from chaos so the number nine to me represents from chaos comes clarity right we went through a lot of chaos and now we're coming into this new earth energy of clarity and um, this new earth where people are you know united I guess so I guess that's the word I would use united anyways Okay, Put this here. Let me see this. And it's interesting is like she's got her feet in the water, right? So I always tell people, uh, especially when we're talking at the beginning about um, the claircognizance and the clairsentience and all that. So when you're when you're beginning to awaken your abilities, uh, you know, water is imperative because it's a conduit to 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 source. So definitely being around water being around in nature drinking lots of water which reminds me to drink some water and I'm feeling my I'm telling you I'm feeling my face is fuzzy like my my head so you might be feeling that like fuzzy head like itchy tingly that's uh, the crown chakra is expanding it's opening up to this new earth energy right it takes a higher expansion to create this new earth uh, it's a collective experience so we're getting there and it looks like she's in the ocean and look at that big ass I've had a dream like that before where I was literally like this like this I was sitting standing it reminds me of the movie contact um, with Jodie Foster highly recommended if you haven't seen it this reminds me of contact uh, I'm also seeing um, the sea exploration right so the people the the ocean astronauts or the ocean aliens I know it sounds crazy to some but hey I'm just gonna speak what I see and it'll all make sense in the end let's see here okay guys <clears throat> thank you guys for being here thank you guys for being here okay. answer the call okay guys yes so we were talking about the number nine representing um, humanitarianism, right? Um, and number five is all about travel and going places. And I, I was getting a repeating message on my Instagram stories about uh, maps and traveling and, and going somewhere, being called to go somewhere, being called to do something. Uh, so I'm seeing maps. Yeah, that's that pressure. So I'm feeling like... Like the energy is trying, like it's trying to move past the throw up here, right? So it, sometimes it gets a little bit stuck in the third eye, that the region. You start getting these headaches, these this pressure, uh, this pressure headaches, and that's because the the vibration of the earth is changing, right? It almost feels like mm, 
and then it starts going a little bit faster. It starts rising. Um, so you'll feel that pressure in your head. Yeah, I had that same headache, the same headache this week. So what is your soul calling you to do? And I love that both of them, both of the cards have, they're both right by the water. So if you're being called to go near water or maybe a salt bath, if you can't be around nature water, but definitely seeing, um, being around water, like a water source. Um, but I'm seeing water. Drinking lots of water. Water. And, you know, I'm going back to the rainbow that I saw in the first card because um, in the Bible, as we were talking about the Bible, like I said, the Bible has some profound stories that can relate to us right now. It doesn't, it's not meant to be taken literally. Um, and one of the, the things was that when Noah's, when, when God flooded the world, um, after the flood, a rainbow appeared as a promise to, uh, earth that God would never flood, um, flood them again. <laughs> And I'm like, are you sure about that, God? Because <laughs> some things need to be washed away. That's just how I feel sometimes. It's not, you know, it's not anything else. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Frankie is the cutest. Frankie is the cutest. See her. Hi, Aurora. Simply love. Simply love, guys. Look at this. Number six. So, you know, we think of number six. Of course, it represents family. It represents love. It represents balancing, um, nurturing as well. And look at, look at the, I was just talking about the Bible. And look at, he's holding a book. And um, immediately what I'm seeing that, it's just, it's a book and it's just got a heart. It's like a journal, right? Journaling. Um, but I'm also seeing it as guiding our children with love, simply love. Um, you know, the hateful and things acts of the of of the Bible, uh, that or, or the misrepresentations. They're not realizing that it's simply meant to be love. It's simply meant to be love. Um, Jesus taught love. Uh, Buddha taught love. Muhammad taught love. It's all simply love. That is the lesson. And I've had visions where. Um, I've seen, you know, beyond our time into the future, uh, you know, because it's all one and it was all love. We finally get out of this whole separation of hatred and all this stuff. And we reach this state of love, loving each other, realizing that I am you and you are me. And, um, I love that. And I actually, I want to read this card, but look at all this green heart chakra, right? And, but then we got the sun behind it. So the, the, it's almost like, I don't know if that's a father and the son, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the rising sea levels. I'm telling you, like, uh, this, uh, I've been having dreams about that. I've been having dreams about uh, a flood. And I, I was thinking maybe I'm just picking up on what happened with Atlantis and Lemuria. Um, almost like that is repeating again. Um, but let's see what Simply Love says. Oh, look at it, opened right to it. Opened right to it, guys. Innocence, nostalgia, kindness, and children. So uh, definitely seen, okay, um, the humanitarian aspect of the call. Maybe it's the call to help children of some sort. Um, I'm hearing that song by Whitney Houston. I believe the children are future. <laughs> Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. <laughs> um, people often fondly remember the in innocence of youth at a time when life seemed simpler. So this is also about tapping into your childlike nature. Um, how do people stay young, right? Uh, I get asked that all the time. How do I look young? Um, or why do I look so young? Uh, I think partly genetics as well is one big thing, but mainly because I, I'm a child. I'm a child at a heart. I don't, I see myself as this child, divine child within. Um, that's how I practice everything. Uh, I play every day with my dog, like I'm a kid. Um, tapping into that, that vib vibratory frequency of, of your, your, your childhood. And not the childhood that is trauma, traumatized, but your ideal childhood, right? the happy moments. 
Um, this card is a call to action to bring that innocence and energy into the present and into your relationships as much as you can. Interact with others from a pure and open heart, full of love and free of ulterior motives. Do this and you'll find your relationships will deepen and require far less effort. When you reminisce about your past, bring back only the happy memories and cherish them. Yes, exactly what I just said. When we tap into that childlike nature, we don't, I'm not tapping into the, the moments when I was beaten as a kid. I'm not tapping into the moments when I was sexually assaulted as a kid. I'm not tapping into that. I'm tapping into the happy memories and moments. They're very, very small moments. I didn't have a lot. So I remember those, like, I just remember this one moment with my, my cousin probably one of the happiest moments it was my cousin we were probably four years old I don't really remember anything beyond before seven years old so this is a memory and I had a little dog that you pull on a string and every time you pull it it has a little windy tail it goes wah, 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 and it makes this weird noise as it walks and I just remember us playing with that little dog and having it was pure innocent innocence and it was fun and it was boring to some people but I we were having such a great time and I tap into those memories those moments I tap into you know dancing around my room singing Michael Jackson right um, uh, envisioning myself you know on stage with Michael Jackson or whatever uh, so I tap into those moments so it's about tapping into those vibratory times of your childhood not the horrific memories but the good memories right bringing those to the forefront um, kindness and generosity are at the forefront <laughs> when the card appears the forefront foresight four 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 has been coming through look for ways to help family and friends especially children reach out to them and assist them in way any way you can sometimes just a bit of attention is all that someone needs where kindness prevails relationships flourish and if you're hoping to become pregnant or adopt a child this card is a positive sign beautiful ah oh, so pretty and he's got the book, so I'm seeing somebody writing a book. I've been seeing somebody writing a book um, for for a while now. And there's the book. I think this book is about somebody's life. This is a book about somebody's life. This is a book about love. And I think I needed to hear that message. Okay, let's keep going. Um, I was guided today to do... Um, um, the Gods and Goddesses. So I'm going to do the Gods and Goddesses next. Um, just something about the Gods and Goddesses has been coming through. A lot of like archangels and goddesses and gods has been coming through uh, very strongly this past month. Um, Isis energy, which represents love to me, the d divine feminine love, magic, goddess of magic. So I'm seeing a lot of magic happening as well. Yeah, four before. Uh, when you watch the, the playback of the video, I, I discussed the four and foresight and what's been coming through with four. Oh my God, as I was just talking about magic, um, Rhiannon comes through sorcery. Ooh. Yeah, you are a magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. So look at her. She has a veil, but it's completely off her face. It's like behind her. Like she can see clearly. So there's that foresight that I was talking about. Yeah, uh, I see 808 a lot. It, to me, it represents, well, of course, it represents um, universal abundance on both sides, Being having faith that you are abundant because the zero represents trust to me. Um, but I also see 808 as Hawaii because it's the area code for Hawaii. Um, and also, I see it as Bob, B-O-B. So um, I love that she's got the unicorn because we know that the unicorn represents the third eye, right? The cone. It's a seventh dimensional horse. So it represents also freedom, uh, self-expression. It represents adventure. So I'm seeing a magical adventure. I want to read uh, Rianon. Rianon. Am I even spelling that right? And what's interesting is yesterday the song by Rihanna came through and that was Stay. Um, featuring Mickey Echo. So I'm hearing an echo, like the universe echoing things back to you. Uh, you know, you think of something and all of a sudden it's around you and that's the art of manifestation. Okay. Um, a large part of your power or a large part of my power stems from my connection to animals and nature. If you've been indoors too long, you can recapture your personal power by simply stepping outside. So I've been getting that a lot too. step outside, go outside. Um, Allow the light of the sun, the moon, and the stars to stir ancient memories that may be dormant. Oh my God. So I was talking to you guys at the beginning about memories. Uh, 
remembering, remembering your divinity, remembering your past lives, uh, remembering things that you didn't remember before. Recall the times of your magical abilities and then put them to use immediately for the good of the entire planet. Holy cow, guys, that was coming through, the, the humanitarianism. So today, as the nine, what, what are we bringing into this new, you know, what are we closing out, what are we bringing in? We're bringing in our magical abilities, our powers that we have, you know, that lay dormant. A lot of us have, you know, these dormant powers. Wow, this looks like my shirt. <laughs> it looks like my shirt that I'm wearing. Eerie. Well, nothing's, nothing's ever eerie in my world, right? Resume the mission that was once aborted through the misdeeds of past time leaders. Take up your spiritual arms and move with swift speed into the night, awakening one and all to the magic that is life itself. So you are awakening people. You, you're just you, your energy. When you come in contact with a person, you awaken them. You don't know why, but there's something about, uh, so there's something about vibrations, right? So a person's vibration, they say that a person who vibrates at a frequency of a certain frequency, um, can awaken a person who is at a lower frequency that's about to awaken it. So if you meet somebody who's on the verge of awakening and you're already awake and you meet them and you shake their hand, you exchange energy with them, they awaken. So I get that. That happens with me a lot. I know it probably happens with you guys as well. Um, I meet somebody and they awaken after our meeting. And, uh, you know, it can be a scary process for a lot of people. So reach out to them if you can. If you notice that they've start to, you know, begin to awaken and they're scared. Um, this is a mission that must be accomplished and you're the one who can help us with it. So absolute, have absolute faith that your dream is manifested. So as you were talking about 808 and what was I saying? Having absolute faith that you are your uh, dreams are coming true, right? 88 represents abundance. They re it represents wishes and dream fulfillment for me. So the fact that you're seeing 8 or 818 on both sides so I, I read I read the numbers like this and then center sometimes it depends on the number um, I read it kind of like how I read cards or how I read things so um, you are your the dreams are coming true right <clears throat> yeah I was talking about earlier so you probably missed this card rock bottom I was talking about that earlier. What are we closing out for the cycle of nine? And it's a heavy energy, right? It's a lot of family energy. It's a lot of letting go of family drama, letting go because a lot of the times our low energy is because of other people around us that are bringing us down. So this is about hitting that rock bottom and realizing you need to get out of that. You need to get out of that hole that you're in. It's time to move. It's time to move. So that's what was coming through. And then I also got, uh, as I was saying that, this that said move, travel, uh, luck is on your side. So definitely seeing that coming through. I'll probably do like a recap of the cards after I'm done. But um, make a clear decision. Put your energy into manifesting your dreams. And I think somebody just got a flat tire outside. I just heard a flat tire. Um, know that you deserve to receive good. When you win, others win too. Keep your thoughts focused on your desire and away from your fears. So keep your thoughts focused on your desires and what you want, not what you're afraid of. Right? A lot of people are like, I don't know if I can do this. So let, let's say, let's take somebody's moving. I don't know if I could afford to move. I don't know. You're, you're focusing on the fears instead of, wow, if I move, I'm going to feel so much better. Life is going to be so much greater. Uh, right? So what are we focusing on? Um, this lunar Welsh goddess names means great queen. It's called Rianun. Rianun. I think, uh, um, what's her name? Stevie Nicks has a song called Rianun. This lunar Welsh goddess name means great queen, as she serves important functions, including being the muse of inspirations for poets, artists, and royalty. So she's a muse. You are a muse. Maybe uh, somebody is your muse, or you have a muse that um, inspires you to write, to create. Some people, like their children, is your muse. Frankie's my muse. Like, you know, uh, love is my muse. When I'm in love, I write the most beautiful fucking shit. <laughs> it's just so weird. Um, but uh, she lovingly carries souls from Earth to the afterlife plane upon her trusty white horse, helping them adjust to um, the transition of life after death. So I'm seeing Beetlejuice, the manual for the recently deceased. I'm seeing that, like helping people. So this is the awakening process. When I help people that are awakened, it's because they pat like their old self has died, and I'm welcoming, 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 in, welcoming them into this new earth this new world where everything is magical and you know it's 
so okay so uh a shapeshifter oh my gosh hold on hold on she lovingly carries souls from earth a shapeshifter rihanna can appear to you as an animal bird or song call upon her for help with manifestation spirit communication transition artistic inspiration yes so uh in my on my story on my instagram on my personal instagram i posted about shape shapeshifters and the art of shape shifting and so here it is again rihanna the queen of shape shifting so definitely seen shape shifting you know what are werewolves they're shapeshifters okay let's keep going so far some amazing cards here well yeah um i take uh, everything is my muse right I mean, yeah, I'm my own muse too, but everything is my muse. Like, I can go, my tree outside, it can be my muse for the day. You know, the bunnies that, that hop at night, they're, they're my muse. Anything could be your muse. Anything that inspires you to create something beautiful uh, is your muse. A lot of musicians, they have muses, right? People that inspire them to write something profound. Oh my gosh! We got Rihanna and the Magic Guardian. I love this. Uh, unlock the magic within. This is absolutely beautiful. And I love that these colors are coming through that green again. The green and gold. The gold represent, representing the Christ consciousness, right? That awakening. Uh, this is so, so beautiful. And she's got this, you know, she's the alchemist. Look at, she's got her bowl in her hand. She's creating, you know, potions and spells and stuff like that. Um, you know, with magic, um, I only... I don't really practice like magic in the sense like you know rituals and spells um i only work for like things for myself like uh you know um how can i say this free will things things that only can that can affect me and will not affect anybody else negatively only for the highest good of everything that's how it works that's how i do it a lot of people don't they practice magic and you know um it's mostly uh things for themselves which is not that's fine as long as it's not affecting another person but a lot of people practice to hurt others and in the art of free will you can't really hurt others with magic um the, the person has to believe that they are being hurt in order for it to actually work because it, a lot of it has to do with just the mind um and energy but if you're doing magic because you want to hurt somebody else you're just creating more karma in your life so i always tell people when they're practicing magic like be mindful of what you're practicing. It's, you know, it's not something to play with. So we're going to read Magic Guardian. I just love her. She's got these beautiful gold earrings. She's got the flower. Holy cow. Wow. <laughs> Look at her. She's got these beautiful ear gold earrings. And then she's got the flower of life behind. With that, with the flower of life. Oh, and the hamsa. And she's got the hum, the hand up. That's so weird. <laughs> Yes, the karma. I don't think people uh I don't think people realize that when they're practicing that stuff, right? Okay, so here we go. Uh, Magic Guardian. Love it. I'm just going to show you the cards so you guys can see. Stop looking outside of yourself and recognize that you have incredible power within. Magic with a K is the energy of the universe that allows you to manifest and create through the direction of power of your will. Uh, uh no wait, even <laughs> <clears throat> Let me read this again. Magic with a K is the energy of the universe that allows you to manifest and create through the direction of uh, direction and power of your will. It changes according to your frequency. The magic guardian is a representation of the angel of magic who helps you direct your will to bring something into creation. She is the angel who swirls around shamans and wise ones when they are calling on the energy of magic to help them manifest something that will be healing and supportive of their path. She is the angel of all magic. Uh, that is directed for the highest good of whoever is working with it. See, for the highest good. Um, extended message, you are the magic. You are the answer. You have it all within you. If you've been searching for an answer or reason to focus, recognize that all you are looking for is already within you. You are a powerful and magical person with a capacity to direct your intentions and will, your desire and your desires into being. But your power can only be powerful when you own it. So take time to acknowledge just how powerful you really are. Uh, your ability to dedicate yourself to a goal and make it happen is a real gift that you are being guided and 
guided to recognize now. So I love that this came through as I discussed what is, what are we doing? What are we letting go of? And what are we bringing into? And we are letting go of uh, not honoring our power, not realizing how powerful we are. We are finally realizing it and we're stepping into the 10, which is the Phoenix rising from the ashes. And we are realizing our power. We're realizing just how powerful we really are. Yeah, see, that's the that, there's your alignment, right? When we start to align our path, we st everything starts coming together, and these synchronicities start coming together to remind us just how powerful we really are. And I think a lot of us, you know, we forget, right? This is why the Adele song came through in the beginning. Why don't you remember? <laughs> why don't you remember just how powerful you are, right? Right? Oh my God. I just realized how many times I say right. <laughs> this is crazy. This is cray cray. This is cray cray cray. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Sanat Kumara. Look, guys. Do, do, do. Hi, Carla. 1010, yes, the phoenix rising from the ashes. I was talking about it earlier. Um, so light activation. I was just talking about that a lot of people are awakening. They're activating their abilities. And this says, uh, shine your light. Your internal guidance is coming through loud and clear. And I love that he is all white. That represents the crown chakra to me. Uh, so I was talking to you guys at the beginning about the vision that I had in my meditation of, of future, of the future, which once again, we know that the future is just another another timeline, right? So mer timelines merge, and that's how we get to that that future, the future. Uh, in that future, this guy was there wearing this exact outfit, this exact everything, this. So this guy coming through is a confirmation here. So in my vision, um, I was watching kids. They were all in, in, in the class, and this guy was teaching the class. This guy, all white with the white and the kids were all wearing all white and so the white represented purity to me representing the ascension process right representing finally reaching that crown chakra expansion and realizing oh uh we are all part of the one source so it represents source to me um i don't think i've ever pulled this card so i want to read it um i love that he's got in the back of his uh in the back of him uh it's all dark but you could see very faintly that there are uh there's a three and a six there uh, it's actually light language. It looks like a three and a six and there's a five over here. So five, five, five. Today is five uh, when you add the date together with uh, the year. We're in a five year. So this is the year of magic. So this year has been magical. I don't know about you guys, but I've been experiencing profound magic. Um, I've been manifesting things out of nowhere. Uh, and it's, it's reminded me of my power. And it reminds me of your guys' power because if I can do it, you guys can do it. And it's about remembering uh, your divinity and your power. Okay, so yeah, I was going to read Sanat Kumara. Oh, so let me show you the, the, what I was talking about. So you look at his chest. I hope you guys can see it. I don't think it's going to zoom. But anyways, he's got a five right in the center of his chest. Uh, there's a five over here as well. There's a three, six over here. So three, six equals nine. So we have five, nine here. Uh, this is what today is. Today is 5-9. This is crazy. <laughs> um, wow. Okay, so 5 represents magic. It represents freedom, transformation, change, movement, moving, uh, traveling. Uh, traveling without moving. Astral travel. Astral projection. Um, what's coming to me? <laughs> so not Kamara. So not Kam Wait. Oh yeah, Sanat. Sanat. Here it is. Oh my gosh, you guys, Sanat Kumara means eternal youth. What was I just talking to you guys at the beginning with the child? I was talking to you guys earlier about the child and the eternal youth and that, that feeling of eternal, uh, not aging, right? The stopping the aging process. So uh, it's an advanced cosmic light being who is dedicated to helping the earth rise up towards the light. He is, as far as I'm concerned, the leader of the keepers of the light. He has been acknowledged as a god in Hinduism and in the Mahabharata, wait, Mahabharata story, which has come down from the heaven bearing God's divine plan. In more recent times, 
he has been acknowledged as coming from Be from Venus and bringing through unconditional love. He has eyes that are made of the cosmos with the ability to penetrate the soul and activate its brightest light yet. So I'm seeing a person whose eyes penetrate your soul. Like I, I'm sure a lot of you guys have that ability. You meet people and it's almost like you can see see through their soul. You can see their 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 um, what they perceive as their faults, their their things that they're holding on to. Uh, it, you know, it's an energy, right? It's a vibratory. You're you're feeling and you're tapping into their vibratory frequency. Yes, yes, I think so. Oh, it's eleven eleven. Yes, I think he is uh, the Kumaras. And uh, it says, um, "Oh my God!" Okay, he can seem other world, otherworldly because his looks are beyond human. Uh, he is a being of light, shining with the purest intentions. He is the twin flame of Lady Venus. Mm, Lady Venus. Um, I have a lot of Venus in my chart. I wonder if you guys have a lot of Venus. I, I feel like a lot of us have the same like. Um, seem like chart placements and stuff uh it's i found i found that to be very interesting that i've been meeting a lot of people that have similar chart placements so you are here to light up the world you may feel that you are being pushed or that there are a lot there's a lot going on at once and this is because your energy is magnetic to others and they want it in their life take the time to listen to your inner voice remember the cosmic light of heaven and draw it into you that is all you need to do to inspire the world. Okay, so let me get, this reminds me of something. I've been getting a lot of readers, a lot of, um, you know, random videos that pop up on my TikTok. And they're always talking about, you know, protect yourself. People are here to steal your magic, to steal your light. Nobody, nobody can steal your magic. Nobody can steal your light. Why? Because you are magic. You are light. So yes, you can protect your energy, but then again, you're protecting it from yourself because everybody is a part of you. So this is why I don't do a lot, you know, every now and then I'll do clean, energy cleanses and things like that with, uh, you know, with stuff. I'll wear, you know, a, a little necklace to kind of you know, get, keep my vibe high. It's never to protect myself from anybody, but it's to keep my vibration high because when your vibration is high, you don't need protection because it's already, you're already vibing high. Everything just kind of bounces off. So... I think when we require a lot of protection, we are living in fear. Um, so it's about letting that go. Nobody can uh, have power over you unless you give them power over you. Is what I'm getting here. Nice. Yeah, this is, I mean, just reading your comments. I, w uh, I, I should read, because it doesn't save the, the commentary, but I should read it out loud. Um, yeah, fear mongering is definitely bad. Uh, you know, I try not to. I, I, I think that's why I don't do a lot of like um, protection Reiki or any of that stuff. I do I, because I already know that I'm divinely guided. I'm divinely protected. And I think I want everybody that that comes to me to also know that they are divinely guided and they are divinely protected. Uh, you know, you you are already the light. Okay, what else are we going I'm excited. This reading has been very, pro very profound so far. This is a interesting, and I'm, I'm really glad that I, I went out of my comfort zone today to create this. I haven't even showered today. I was just like, do I? Ah, uh, it's too hot. It was just, it was getting too hot, and I was like, when it gets too hot, I don't want to do anything because I don't have AC. So I just kind of just kind of lay here to try to not create heat. <laughs> um, and so pretty much my summer has just been me trying not to create heat, which kind of sucks. But let's keep going. Let's keep reading. Let's keep going. This is a great 9-9. Nine -nine. I'm feeling this great magical 9-9 nine -nine energy. Uh, if you've been feeling down, which I have been feeling down for the whole month of 8, I was feeling super down, but, uh, but also still experiencing magic. So it was kind of weird. And I feel like a lot of you guys are also experiencing that. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, some people feel the power of the evil eyes is... Uh, I, I, I don't... Um, I don't think anything can penetrate your energy unless you believe it to be. So that's just, I'm going to just stick with that because if I start believing in this, the evil eye and all that stuff, it's like, now what, what more am I going to let in and believe in? Um, see, I love that this came through as we're talking about that self limitation. So when we believe these things, we're creating self limitations. See the, the, you know, it's like a little devil. They're bound and they're shackled to that, 
that theory, that idea, that limitation. Um, anytime I start believing in things that I know are not, they don't feel right, uh, it doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel right to believe it, so I don't. I, I don't force myself. Um, another thing that I, I, I'm not very big on is astrology. Um, because also, that's part of the matrix, that's all part of the matrix programming, so... Um, though I do follow it sometimes to guide uh, energy of other people, what's happening with them, I don't really follow it personally for myself. Um, but I know a lot of people do. So I follow it because I know that they're going to be um, manifesting that in their reality, right? Like, does that make sense? <laughs> um, but the tempter, self-limitation. So number six came through with number six over here. So I'm seeing like love temptations here. Um, I'm seeing also... Um, this is that devil energy, right? The addictive, addictive tendencies. Um, and interesting that the song that came through was by the Rolling Stones, which was sympathy for the devil, right? Having sympathy for the devil. What can be, what can be the devil? Yes. Yeah. Shadow. Yeah. Like I, I, I understand the, the concept of shadow, shadow work and I do my shadow work. I just don't, there's things that I just don't believe in. And I don't try to, I don't force myself to believe in, in certain things. So, but I do understand that this, the devil energy that is real because I've experienced it. Um, when I had my awakening, I experienced the, the dimension of hell. So I understood that it, it is real and it exists, but I don't have to live there. Right? So with anything, it is real, it can exist, but that doesn't mean I have to live there. And uh, so the tempter, so I'm seeing temptations happening, temptations, uh, addictive, addictive temptations. And love as well. Letting go of the shackles that bind you and to others. So the temptation could also be being shackled to comfort, the comfort zone, right? Being in a comfort, a comfort zone in your life. Um, this can be a home, this can be a relationship, this can be a friendship, be, feeling like shackled to them. But it's having sympathy, right? So, uh, you know, people that are in addiction, I think a lot of people lose uh, lose sympathy for them uh, because they did it to themselves, right? And this is about having sympathy for the for those that even though they make bad choices and decisions, you still want to have sympathy for them. going the chariot I love this Archangel Metatron Archangel Metatron has been coming through very strongly uh, this past month um, I think my friend uh, the dot whisperer she uh, she's here on Instagram she uh, did an artwork that was um, a mandala type of dot dotalism and it was about Archangel Metatron. Um, Archangel Metatron, I've uh, been working with Archangel Metatron's energy for a few years now. Since I started getting into numerology, it, it felt like um, sacred geometry, all that stuff started coming together with Archangel Metatron. And so I'm seeing Archangel Metatron here. This is the chariot, an important achievement, self-discipline and willpower, right? And public recognition. So I'm seeing somebody overcoming this devil energy, right? Because that's what the chariot, represents to me coming away from that like look at the number six and the number seven so ascending out of that energy uh into this new new vibration right i love that he's got the two horses as we were talking about um the yin and the yang working with both right there's the yin and the yang so working see how he's working with both of them he's letting both of them guide him He's not, he's not suppressing one or the other. He's just letting them, he's working with the both energies and he's saying, I'm gonna work with both of them. They both have their own uh, power. They both have their own um, purpose. And I think that is the lesson here, is the yin and the yang. It has to coexist with the other, right? Sympathy for the devil, <laughs> right? Yeah, I have sympathy for the devil. Um, so definitely seeing an important achievement and I'm seeing, so this is interesting as I was saying, overcoming uh, 
the addicted addictions um but it doesn't have to necessarily have to be an addiction to like uh drugs or alcohol or whatever it could be you know social media blah blah, blah friends bad relationships i'm seeing the overcoming of that right so the nine is closing out the old cycle saying i'm done with this bullshit and now i'm moving into this chariot i'm on top i'm on this chariot i'm riding this chariot the heck out of here yes right we understand that even the devil needs love uh there's a oh oh there's a, a a meme it's one of my it's not a meme it's an image like one of those internet images it's one of my favorite images and it's a girl she has the blindfold on and she's dancing with the devil she can't see that he's the devil because she's only lead, letting her heart lead her and so you know she says and then it says trust me even though she had a blindfold on she knew exactly who she was dancing with but she chose to see the good in everybody and it is one of my favorite images. It is profound because I do that. I, I try to see the good and even the people that are the worst because I it's it's the yin and the yang. Just because they you know you see them out dark doesn't mean they don't have light within them. Yeah, see that's this is like almost like a congratulations, like a, an achievement, right? Um what did you say for a year and a half now, right? So 1.5, 1.6. So public recognition, so I'm seeing public recognition as well. So somebody's gonna be in the public eye for something. Um, I don't usually read this, but I'm, so let's talk about the number seven. Seven represents truth, represents having faith in something. And uh, faith was coming through over here as well when we were talking about the number 808. So having faith in something ha and seeing the truth. So the truth is being revealed. People are, are seeing the truth in things, right? They're stepping into truth. So it says, congratulations. This card means you've successfully balanced a recently challenging situation. Your ability to see both sides, take action, and make decisions has garnered your approval, respect, and gratitude. So bask in the joy of what you've accomplished. Stay calm and grounded and be clear about what you're trying to achieve. It is important to show self-control, determination, uh, and willingness to go the distance at any time. Exercise control firmly but kindly with other people. Uh, Self-discipline, sheer willpower, a great leap forward, a promotion, an award, travel. So a mode of transportation. Um, what's interesting is Archangel Metatron, it says, can, uh, can increase your motivation and energy level so that you'll accomplish your priorities. Metatron uses a sacred geometric shape called the Merkaba, or Metatron's cube, to warp time, which enables you to instantly manifest your dreams into reality. Yes, so as I was telling you guys that with Metatron, I had been working with his energy for a while, and when I had one of my awakenings in 2017, I Metatron was everywhere, and I was manifesting things into reality like that. But I didn't know what my power, that power was at the time. I just thought everything was a synchronicity or a fluke. But it was me actually manifesting these things into reality, and I did work a lot with the Merkaba and the Cube. Um, it is one of my favorite things to work with. Uh, I actually, uh, when I do crystal grids, I make, I do a Metatron's cube crystal grid. So chariot, so I'm seeing a chariot, I'm seeing a car. Maybe somebody is thinking about a car or traveling, thinking about traveling. Let's see. Yeah, astral travel, right? The chariot can also rep represent astral travel. So when I astral travel, uh, how I do it is I, I envision a, uh, so in my meditation, I envision a Merkaba star. Uh, it's, you know, regular size. And then as it starts wrapping my whole body, uh, and I'm in the whole Merkaba. And then that's, in, and then I envision it spinning. So one side spinning this way and the bottom side spinning this way, op opposite directions like this. And then I envision it going out into the ethers, right? But I'm still attached to my body. So that feeling of safety, um, sometimes I will, um, hold something that uh, attaches me to earth just to kind of at, at first because you could be scary at times not knowing if, if you can bring yourself back to your body uh, a lot of people when they begin to astral travel their body vibrates like they if they're if they're still in the half awake you can feel your body like Zzzz. and so it can be a little bit scary for people because they think they're dying uh, that can also feel like you're dying as well yeah travel a lot of people do in their in their sleep state a lot of people do they do travel without knowing that they're traveling 
Okay, the, the Queen of Scrolls. I love this because we can't, We had a book over here coming through with the Simply Love. So I'm seeing a book of love. The Queen of Scrolls. I don't remember what... Um, oh. Oh my gosh. So I guess I forgot a card, but here it is. The Scribe. So not only did we get the Queen, Queen of Scrolls, but the Scribe was left over there which is pretty awesome. So the number three, which is the writer. So I'm seeing somebody writing something. Uh, somebody is definitely writing something, whether it's a PDF book or some, some kind of a book, because I see a lot of scrolls here. I see the scribe uh, writing history. I'm also seeing uh, like the Akashic records when they write um, things that are written, but things can change. So the Akashic, like I was saying earlier, the Akashic records are not solid. Uh, they are ever expanding, ever growing they change as you heal and grow the akashic records change because now you're you're living in the present moment you're not living in the past anymore yeah number three well oh you know what's interesting i i posted it in my um instagram stories of what like last week i think i went for a walk and somebody had lost their i guess their birthday balloons and it was a big huge three it was probably about three feet tall a big three and it was attached to the three was uh, Toy Story. Three figures from Toy Story. It was Woody, uh, the girl, the Barbie girl, and um, uh, Buzz Lightyear. And they were like hanging off the three, kind of like Toy Story 3, when they're all hanging. So the number three, Toy Story 3, maybe that movie um, means something to you. Everybody has always told me to watch that movie. I think I tried watching it one time. I couldn't get through it maybe I'll try watching it again but I want to read what the, the Queen of Scrolls has to say because she's the Queen of Writing to me um, when I think of the Queen of Scrolls oh I opened up to the King of Scrolls <clears throat> okay so uh, it says She's a woman of higher mind whom you may already know or have yet to meet. Her purpose is to help you move through the entryway to a new level of wisdom and understanding. She could be a teacher to you in some way or offer a friendship that could develop into a deeper uh, love. So this could be, it doesn't have to be a female. It's, a, it's just the energy of feminine energy. So it can also be a masculine who is balanced with his feminine energy. And it can be a feminine, right? So... Uh, and the fact that you liked it as a kid is interesting because if you remember the card Simply Love was talking about what did you like as a kid? What, what, what did you like as a kid? And it's almost like reminding you those things that brought you joy as a child. Tap back into those things. <clears throat> and I love that she's, it looks like she's got um, behind her, it looks like she's got, I know it's, uh, it's probably the Celtic stuff on the back, but it does look like the Flower of Life. And the Flower of Life is coming through over here with the magic. So I'm seeing a lot of sacred geometry magic. So this woman could be helpful to you in some project requiring communication. She may be an author, a marketer, or a publisher. If you are a writer, she may be someone who assists you in getting published. The Queen of Scrolls could also represent you or a woman in your life getting a position in a field related to communication or academics such as counseling, teaching, marketing, or publishing. I'm seeing a lot of publishing. Definitely seeing publishing. We've got two cards that represent publishing. Uh, this card indicates a phase of deepening understanding and readiness to learn. It's a perfect time for personal growth and expansive learning, whether it's mind, body, or spirit-centered. Open the mysteries that are hidden in the Akashic Scrolls and step through the door of knowledge. So um, what's interesting... Uh, we're talking about what we're closing out in uh, for the 9-9 nine -nine and what we're bringing in. So we're bringing in... Frankie! Uh, so we're bringing in uh, these opportunities to write. These opportunities, whether it's uh, new marketing strategy strat strategies for your work or um, writing. Uh, new ways to write. New ways to communicate with people so um, they can have a better understanding of you, I guess. Let me see. Well, yeah, see, that's, there it is, higher learning. That's awesome. So now we're going to see, uh, so the scribe, which was number three. And I was talking about to you guys earlier about the 369. 
and what it represents. Ooh. Oh, wait. Oh, number 12. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, so one, two, three. Um, so this card indicates a great upsweep in mind and study for you. If there's any subject with which you'd like to acquaint or reacquaint yourself, do so. So I was seeing that as well, learning something new, learning something more. Um, I'm trying to get reacquainted with tarot. Uh, I don't really, I don't really read tarot. If you guys, if you guys have watched my readings, I don't really read tarot. I do oracle readings because I like the imagery. Um, it's not so fixed, but I've been guided to go back to um, the roots of tarot. So maybe um, you guys have been guided to do that as well, or, or some sort of new learning, a, new, a higher learning, like how you were saying your PhD. Um, so definitely seeing something like that. Um, this period of higher mind and higher learning is nothing less than a change your life or even change the world opportunity. Just as the Wright brothers began by studying the flight patterns of birds, you can rise up on the wings of discovery now. So by studying the birds, they learned how to fly. So maybe it's time for you to study something so you could learn how to do it in a different way, right? Uh, there's nothing that cannot be done. So I'm hearing like, uh, like, the bumblebees, right? They're not supposed to be flying because their bodies are not aerodynamic enough to fly because they're, they're, they weigh too much. But they do. They do it anyway. It's like magic, right? Because they vibe. They buzz. And that buzzing vibes vibrate. I don't even know how, how bees fly. But I'm just guessing here. It's a, I'm feeling something about the vibration. Um, there may be a teacher, even an entire school, that can help you with this upliftment. Be sure to seek out the right person or place of learning. You can also become a writer or a teacher yourself at this time. There it is again. Uh, elevating and contributing to others. If you're involved in any legal matters, there's a person who can help you with this. Let great vision guide you to him or her. This could be a time when you might find yourself writing proposals, grants, essays, blogs, articles, or a book. Notice what compels you and be sure to answer the call. Guys, answer the call. What, was, what card came through over here? Answer the call. You're meant to be a writer of some sort. You're meant to write something. You're meant to share something with people. So, okay. I love that. Let's put these back over here. Making some room here. Also, I've got lots of stuff here. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Let's see what... Okay. What, what are we letting go? What, are, what have we healed in this 9-9? Nine nine? And we're moving into the 10... Uh, moving into the 10 after this so what have what are we working on chakra wise i know that i was getting a lot of solar plexus activity uh personally and uh, for the collective as well so a lot of letting go of resentment anger uh unforgiveness letting all that stuff go stepping into your confident self being confident oh my gosh and there's the yellow don't give up okay maybe there's something that you guys have been wanting to do and uh, you were almost giving up on it saying, I don't know if this is possible. Maybe it's this writing project. Maybe it's this new job or something. But it's saying don't give up. It could be also a relationship. And it also could be on yourself, right? Self-confidence. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your dreams. Look at this little tiger. Rawr. Oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. Um, and I forgot what his, I want to see what his name is. I'm just guided to see his little name. Um, Ravi. Ravi. His name is Ravi. Ravi the tiger. So uh, citrine and tiger's eye could be good. Citrine was has been coming through a lot as well. I actually have it right here. Citrine. Um, so don't give up. Um, ask people for help if you need help. Um, think about someone who inspires you to do your best and believes in you no matter what. So that's very interesting as we were talking about muses, right? Um, who is your muse? Uh, let them inspire you. Uh, make a victory list of times you kept going even when things were difficult. That's a great idea, right? Uh, Lord, I could, if I made a list, I would have scrolls, <laughs> scrolls upon scrolls upon scrolls. Um, so imagine yourself as a superhero. Pick a name and power for yourself. Imagine yourself this way when you need the strength and determination to keep going whenever you feel like giving up. That is a great idea. Because not only does that tap back into your childlike nature of imagination, but it helps you in the current now. So that's a great idea. Oh, I love this little tiger. I have the tiger, uh, 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 rising up, back on the street. Da -da 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 -da. 
Yes, tiger's eye. I got a little tiger's eye in there too. So I have the tiger. That's very good to be using right now for your own self-confidence, upliftment, and the healing of the solar plexus chakra. I think we've uh, we've we've moved beyond the sacral, letting go of the guilt and shame about things, and now we're moving into the solar plexus energy of having confidence and, and power to move forward on our dreams. We're letting go of all that uh, lack of self-confidence. Amazonite life purpose. Uh, this card, this particular card, actually represents. Ooh, oh, here it is. Um, it's a it's the life purpose card, but it, this one here it says the middle of the road, and it's the number four and four. So forty four again coming through foresight. Um, the middle of the road represents limbo to me, right? So it also represents the shaman. A uh, shaman. A lot of us are shamans. We don't even know it, but we straddle. 3D and 5D in the four. So our feet are on both sides. We're able to tap into the spirit world, but we're also able to tap here into the, the earthly world and connect with that spirit world. Um, the middle of the road it reminds me of the Jimmy World song. It just takes some time. Little girl, you're in the middle of the ride. Everything, everything will be just fine. Everything, everything will be all right, all right. Hey, don't write yourself off yet. It's only in your head you feel left out. Look down on. Just try your best. Try everything you can. And don't you worry what they tell themselves when you're away. So, so not caring about the opinions of others. Letting go of the opinions of others. Whatever people think about you is none of your business. It's none of your beeswax. And Amazonite in itself is also about your life purpose and stepping into your life purpose and believing in your life purpose, right? A lot of people, they walk around not feeling like they have a purpose. And um, all you got to do is believe that you do have a purpose. Your purpose to really to be is just to be. That's your real purpose in life. Um, when we're born, is that's really just it. Is to, we are a part of nature to be a part of nature, to acknowledge that we are a part of nature. Yeah, four, 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 and five, five, five. So, <clears throat> the animal totem for the Amazonite is the toucan. Toucan Sam. So, this is all about balance, truth. So, speaking your truth, that was coming through earlier as well. Calm achievements. So, we have two cards talking about achievements. Uh, the calm after the storm. So, two st Woo, I just got a huge ping in my head. So the if Amazonite uh, if Amazonite has come to you today, spirit has a message or direction concerning your chosen path in life. This time, the time is here to empower yourself and see your achievements in life, your progress. That is exactly what. Um, which card was it? The chariot. So these are the, they're these two are like the chariot card, and I love that the chariot and the Amazonite card are the same colors that blue and that gold um, so blah, 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 blah. from that space make the choice or decision that you have been putting off the reason for your delay where this change is concerned is that you or someone close to you is unable to see the bigger picture as it is hidden from view a new original way or path gifted and governed by spirit the new solution is a shade of both black and white look at what we were talking about yin and yang it combines all options that have resulted in the inaction to this point listen to the self it only knows um, truth at the heart and so uh, it's all about equality yin yang balance buddha uh egyptian goddess mat and krishna so toucan toucan the toucan two two can do it okay let's keep going oh yeah i want to see these My little animal cards oh oh no did i lose or just the book there we go oh it is getting hot it is getting hot in here so hot in here with a little uh uh and a little bit of uh uh okay, let's see the pansy sweet thoughts oh i love this did i, did I just really lose it 
sundry. It's, it's down here somewhere. Here it is. Okay. The pansy. Pansies are real, they're real pretty flowers. Look at these pansies. Some can th think of a pansy and think of like a person who is a scaredy cat or a girly girl or a girly man. But I don't see it that way. I think a man who embodies his feminine energy is a perfect, is balanced. I think that's the power. Um, so people think that a masculine man is the power, but I think a man that embodies both masculine and feminine is more powerful. Um, so according to legend, pansies were originally white, but were later colored purple by Cupid. Uh, Cupid has been coming through a lot as well. Cherubs, the cherubim, cherub, cherubim, cherubim. Um, so, okay, uh, even with its velvety purple petals, the modest, modest pansy does not demand attention. It simply asks to be kept in your thoughts. In fact, the name pansy comes from the French word pensis, which means thoughts. The pansies was a popular flower during the Elizabeth era and is mentioned often by Shakespeare. It also held great appeal for the Victorians who saw it as a symbol of tender attachment and sweet remembrances. So happy thoughts, thinking of thoughts, right? Thoughts manifest things. So thinking about um, manifesting your thoughts into reality and what you think is what you, what you will get. So you are what you think. Your life stems from your thoughts. <laughs> as I was just saying that. Negative thinking may occasionally enter your mind. But you need not let these thoughts take root. Remember, it is you who decides what fills your mind. Choose healthy, happy thoughts. So whenever I start getting into a negative thought pattern, I kind of stop what I'm doing for a minute. I count to 10 and I swipe that thought away. And, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes I'll get stuck in there, but it's, I have to do something to get myself out of it. I'll tap. I'll do this thing, the, this tapping thing to kind of get my energy moving. I'll get up and do a jumping jack. I have to get myself out of that because I can spiral really fast into a negative depression if I don't get myself out of it quickly. But there's nothing wrong with sitting in, in, in sad thoughts or whatever, you know, it can be healing sometimes. Pansy. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> So all of this is like, a, for Ace of Rocks, this is like, a, almost like a personal reading so far. Oh, I love it. And we're talking about the number five. Here's five. The giraffe. Oh, I love this card because immediately. So l let me just look. So if you look here, right, it's a giraffe behind him, but it actually looks like it's a curtain that's being open. And then there's, it looks like a, a brick wall behind it, right? So sometimes when I'm meditating, this is kind of like what it looks like. It looks like a portal opens up and then I see something through here. So maybe you're having like that kind of like meditation status, but immediately what I'm seeing is like the veil is being open and now it's time to chip away at the blocks, right? To get to the other side. So we got one layer done. Now we're chipping away at this. Uh, two people coming together to do that because look at them. They're looking at each other eye to eye. I'm seeing eye to eye. Eye to eye, eye to eye, right? So the giraffe, okay, so the giraffe not only is the tallest mammal in the world, it also has the largest heart. So I'm seeing the heart chakra, so that heart, that love, that compassion for people, for things, for situations, right? The, even though there's two here, there's three here. So when two people come together and create something, they create something beautiful. And look at how tall and beautiful what they have created. They created this beautiful, tall other giraffe over here, right? Love did that. Love created something beautiful together. Um, and I was talking about the number two or just a minute ago. And so I'm definitely seeing the number two, two people coming together, creating something beautiful. They have, the wall is chipping away. Like I'm seeing like the wall is chipped away. They chipped away at this, this wall that they had on their heart and they're opening their heart now to, to people, to experiences, to love, and they're forgiving the past and they're moving beyond it. So I love that the giraffes came through and the number five, because we know that five is all about, um, freedom and so when we forgive and we let go of the past we set our soul free our soul is free we're not no longer carrying that heavy baggage um on there hi isabel so the giraffe heart centered risks giraffes are the tallest mammals in the world and the earth animal with the largest heart giraffe may be telling you to stretch elongate and expand your body and mind delight in reaching the high hanging fruit that are beyond our eye level this isn't the time to seek approval or follow a group that's what that was saying earlier remember it was saying don't care what other people think about your journey and what you're going down because all that matters is you um it's your journey 
it's like you are the star you are the main character right everybody is just the people that we so uh, we um we cast them in their roles that they're going to be in our lives so instead pave your own way and follow your heart your dream your own direction giraffe reminds you that this is your life path and this is your opportunity to replace obligations with heart driven desires where or to whom is your heart guiding you today reach with love to create your your inner vision and aim high for what you desire love is the answer to all things so i love that that's coming through as well because uh, i was talking about travel earlier and being guided to uh travel somewhere like try being guided to go somewhere that maybe you haven't gone before or maybe somewhere you have gone before and that really speaks to your soul and speaks to your heart um let's see oh yeah we're gonna do the numerology and then we're gonna do um got a couple more a couple more oh yeah we're still doing what were we healing i totally sp skipped over that so we had amazonite which was all about your life purpose right being in the middle stepping out of being in the middle and making a decision making a big decision oh i love it ancient wisdom crystal so there's only four of these in this deck there's a lot this is the master teacher card of ancient wisdom ancient knowledge so i'm seeing a lot of you guys learning new things um and so this goes along with the remembering your past lives and all that stuff like i feel like a lot of you guys are remembering things and you don't know how you know these things uh this is the claircognizant that i was talking about at the beginning of the reading claircognizance uh just knowing things and not knowing how you know them so definitely seeing that i love this crystal i don't think i've ever um I don't think I've ever found one. I've been looking for one everywhere. And I think what makes it the ancient crystal, ancient wisdom crystal, is it's got these delta shapes or these like, uh, these little triangle shapes embedded in it. And I've been looking for one of these. So if anybody ever finds one uh, online, at, you know, a real official one, let me know. Um, I, I actually want to read that one. It just takes some time. Here it is. Ancient Wisdom Crystal. I only got a few more a few more cards to go and then we'll be done here. Here it is. So, Awakening to Ancient Wisdom. So that was coming through with the, the Egyptian stuff that has been coming through recently. Uh, stepping into and sharing that ancient wisdom and ancient knowledge that you have within you. Uh, finding support and guidance from people. That was coming through as well. Uh, getting people to, to help you. Don't give up. Developing a deeper connection to your heart. That's coming through as well with the giraffe right the heart centered wrist the heart with the blue tongue right communicating from the heart um awakening of our divine connection to our planet that was coming through at the beginning of the reading as well i feel like everything that i talked about at the beginning is being confirmed by the cards so um that connection to our planet realizing that we didn't just come here to you know experience you know whatever we also came here to connect with mother earth and realize that we are a part of her so you are currently tapping into the ancient wisdom that you have within you on a deep level. The doorway to this ancient wisdom has now been unlocked, activating your soul's memory as you recall and access this deep-seated knowing to guide your life, claircognizance. Everything you require to move forward is already present and you are encouraged to connect to this wisdom, to believe in yourself and to action this in your life. So all the wisdom learned from this life and each lifetime you've ever lived is inside of you. So it holds your deeper, deep personal truth. So I always tell people that the answers that they're, they're searching for are not outside of themselves. I've read a trillion books. I've read blah, blah, blah. Nothing could compare to the information that came to me when I awoke and through meditation. Nothing can compare to that. So always the answers that you are looking for are inside of you. Yes, the universe gives you confirmations through signs and synchronicities, but inside you, it's all the answers are already within you. I love that card it's so beautiful it's this beautiful like brown mother earthy connection and silver representing the uh the feminine uh aspect right so sil gold is masculine yellow gold is masculine silver is feminine the moon the rhiannon energy right we got the rhiannon energy so tapping into that intuition that that divine intuition when we go outside into nature i always go outside and i i dig my feet in the dirt or i touch a tree and uh, connected deep deeply with nature okay let's keep going here L 
recovery. So as we were just talking about um, the sobriety and your sobriety date, right? Uh, there it is. Recovery is key. So recovering um, immediately, I'm seeing also recovering our memories, recovering our past life memories, recovering our past life knowledge. But of course, we're going to think of this as like addiction, right? In recovery, somebody in recovery. Uh, and I'm seeing also the key, right? He's giving, he's, he's giving her the key. And to me, the key is love. The key is always love. When we, um, it is the most powerful force in the universe. It is, a, it opens any door. Like I got the key, my little love key that I usually wear around my neck right here when I do my Reiki videos, but love is the key. I keep feeling like love is the key. And also because my friend sent me, um, the Hecate bottle, Hecate, Hecate, and it had a key on it. And it's very powerful. It looks like an M. Boop. So I love that recovery. Um, and it opens, it opens, you know, love can open any door. If you are coming from a space of love in your heart, if you are coming from a uh, true you know, the universe knows if your intentions are pure and where it's coming from. Yes, I got the goddess. Yes. My friend sent me this. Uh, I ordered this from my friend. She has a little shop and she made me this Hecate bottle. And, you know, I didn't know. I didn't understand. I know that the name was coming through for me a lot. And I didn't re realize that she's the keeper of the keys. She is, she's the keeper of the gates, right? She has the keys to open all the doors. Oh yeah, recovery. So let's get to recovery here. Here it is. <coughs> oh my gosh, pains from our past unlocks the door of understanding. So I was looking at the, the you know, the childhood stuff that was coming through, and maybe we have all gone. I mean, a lot of us have gone through childhood trauma, and I, I've learned from it, and I've forgiven myself and the people involved as well for the way I handled things and the way that they did and just letting it go and and just trying to remember the happy things and the happy memories so um it says it is time to recover a part of me that has been dormant i am i ready to live an inspired future are you ready are you ready to live this the life of your dreams right a lot of us are afraid of of uh of success for some reason and uh it keeps us in this state of fear so you know we have to step beyond that fear threshold to get to where we want to get to. Facing fears, wounding a strength, courage to face pain, awakening greatness. So regeneration, understanding. So Greta wakes to find painful childhood memories all around her room. In the distance appears a huge wooden door with white light streaming through the keyhole. As Greta tries to gather up her painful memories, they melt and form the great lilac key. She places the key in the lock and a wave of fear engulfs her. The door opens and the pain and fear recede. Clarity comes. Survival is no longer enough. And uh, so the lilac key, when I think of the color lilac, I think of the crown chakra. So finally understanding that everything is exactly and divinely orchestrated and planned and we are all connected. And every experience we experience was we were meant to experience that, whether it's through our own karmic repayment or because it gr makes us grow and makes us uh, strong to help others that are going through the same thing. Um, but the key, my key. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, and then we're gonna do um, a numerology one here. Yeah, forgiveness is key. Forgiveness is key. Look at that, forgiveness is key. Follow your dreams. Oh my goodness. Coming through with the key. So as we were just talking about, and then look at this beautiful blue, it's a throw chakra blue. And then it's, we've got what we love, right? Our heart, higher heart chakra, follow what we love. And letting go of the fear of following our dreams. Sometimes we're afraid of success because we, you know, we don't know what, where it's gonna lead us. And uh, sometimes we're afraid too much of too much. Uh, but we were, we were meant to be here. And uh, I'm tapping into, there is a, a, a little musician, her name is um, Nandy Bushnell. Nandy Bushnell? Nandy Bushnell. She's a little drummer, she's a bass player, she's a guitar player, she does everything. She's nine years old. <laughs> 
and she's living her dreams. And I think to myself, what fear is there in that living her dreams, right? She doesn't have any fear because she's nine and she's being supported by her family and friends and uh, she's got so much support. And I think we could all be living like Nandi if we just let go of our fears of, of following our dreams. So whew, it is hot and I'm sweaty. Ugh. Sorry guys. <laughs> I apologize for my sweaty demeanor, but it's the number 85. So I'm think I'm seeing 1985. Um, and it's, it reduces back down to five. Wait, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. No, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, number four. So it reduces four. So building a solid foundation based on your dreams and what you want to build and create. So you, the abundance is there if you follow your dreams, right? It, it'll give you the freedom. It'll not only give you freedom, but it'll, it'll bring you abundance if you follow your dreams. Okay, Um. what else? Oh yeah, I was gonna do Love, my loved ones oh my gosh I opened up the bottom of the deck was freedom as we're talking about freedom the freedom to follow your dreams to freedom freedom to follow and romance Cupid's arrow strikes was at the other bottom I don't know if you can see it Cupid's arrow strikes so I'm seeing um, freedom to love I gotta do uh, Oracle of E. I'm gonna do this in Oracle of E. New beginnings, guys. As I was, we're talking about nine nine being the closing of an old cycle and stepping into a new beginning. We are leveling up. So here it is with the dove representing new beginnings. New beginnings, guys. And I, I think of this and I think of Prince, right? Um, I'm your conscience, I'm a dove, or no, something like, I'm a dove, I'm your conscience, I am love. So I think of those lyrics from I Would Die For You by Prince. I would die for you, yeah. So that's beautiful, new beginning, a new adventure awaits. And adventure, so there's the adventure, number five. A new adventure awaits. Live your dreams passionately. Live your dreams, follow your dreams, live your dreams passionately. These two cards are like the exact same card. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do two more. We're gonna do the Oracle of E, and then we're gonna do the Ascension cards, and we are gonna be all set. I'm gonna do a recap of what is happening here. Okay, here we go. These are my favorite, actually. The Oracle of E. Thank you, Amanda. Amanda Jean gave me this deck years ago, and it's one of my favorites. Oh my God, 21 number three. So we got two cards, 21, 21. So two, one, two, one. Uh, a twin number here so abracadabra we got rhiannon sorcery magic we got the magic guardian we got the uh, the other magic cards we have three magic cards three the magic of three guys amazing abracadabra i speak as i i speak what i see or what i speak comes into reality i forgot how it goes uh, but you guys know what i'm talking about that is amazing so cool so 21 21 3 3 the magic number of enlightenment i'm seeing enlightenment especially with the sanat the sanat uh kamara card i'm seeing enlightenment i'm seeing uh, stepping into this new life uh it's aramaic uh, abracadabra i create as i speak so when i speak into reality this is why i was telling you guys that i, I stopped listening to rage against the machine because i i get very passionate when i sing them and um i don't want to create that reality so i try to like you know, when I'm personally listening to my own songs, I try to like listen to things that are happy, that make me happy, uh, put me in a high vibe. Abracadabra. Aladdin's not the only one with three wishes. Three wishes! I've been getting that as well. You too have a magical lamp that you can summon all your desire to your doorstep. It's a simple matter of making a clear intention and letting go of any fool notion that you have to wait for the genie. You are the magic. That's what I just told you guys at the beginning of this reading, that you guys are the magic. Here it is. It looks like a portal, like going through a stargate. So walking through this portal, we are closing out the nine. Nine, nine is the ending of a cycle. We're closing that out. From chaos comes clarity. We're stepping into this, to coming out the other side to this new. I'm almost seeing like a black hole, like going through a black hole and seeing what's on the other side. We don't know what's on the other side of the black hole until we go through it. 
we don't know. We just hypothesize and we theorize, but we don't know what's on the other side until we actually go through it. And a lot of people are scared of going through the dark. So letting go of that fear, right? And all that blue, right? Self-expression, communication, tranquility. Uh, I've seen a lot of blue. I've been seeing a lot of blue coming through. I love that. Oh, I'm so blown away by that 2121 and all the magic cards that came through. And we'll do one final card here. Ooh, something flipped over. Release. Release anything that keeps you from your path of authenticity. So release, let go of any anything that's no longer serving you, no longer serving the collective. Higher. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Letting all that stuff go. As for if uh, I, the Rage Against the Machine stuff and the anarchy that you mentioned, um, it just makes me very angry when I listen to it. And I already know that it exists. I already know that it happens. I don't want to put my energy to focus to, to be on that. I want my energy to focus on healing, uh, healing those things from how I want things to heal. <laughs> so the way I do things is slightly a little bit different than everybody else, which is fine. Um, I already know the end plan. And so I focus on my end vision and my end goal um, of what I saw. So it's about letting go of anything that no longer serves that, releasing it, releasing the past, releasing the pain, releasing the trauma, and letting go and focusing on now, focusing on how you, f the now. Okay, do one more of these. Blue star, oh my gosh. If you look at this, it looks like a bunch of blue stars abracadabra blue star wow follow the light of your inner compass the blue star it will lead you to the truth that resides within your soul so whenever i think of the blue star i think of the blue star seeds um but i also think of the blue star kachina which is a hopi prophecy of purification uh which i actually there i don't really believe in prophecies and all that stuff the only one that i actually resonates with me has been the blue star kachina prophecy um if you actually read into it, it, a lot of the stuff has come to pass. And um, so highly recommend looking that up. The Hopi, H-O-P-I prophecy for the Blue Star Kachina. And it's time to follow your light, your inner compass, your heart. It's time to follow it. So let's, let me recap all the cards that we got. And then we're going to end this reading on a high note. I'm really stoked that that Blue Star came through. I'm seeing a star. You are a star, and the fact that it's a blue star or a throw shock or communication, you have an ability to communicate uh, with people uh, and create and be creative in a, in a creative way that helps people. So let's get all these cards in order here. I'm just really stoked about the um, release, releasing, releasing uh, your self-expression, releasing anything that you're holding back. Uh, which you're not communicating. Yes, yes, and look at this. Looks like the portal, the blue star, Sirius. I know this is serious. So I was getting uh, this song that kept popping through. Uh, it's called "This Is Serious" um, by the Rivalry. They're no longer a band anymore. They don't even have. I don't think any of their music is even on anywhere. It's just you can maybe find a couple songs on um, YouTube. But the song was called Serious, and it kept popping through. I know this is serious. Yes, this is serious. So the serious, I feel like, is, is communicating. <laughs> so serious is communicating. Yes, Estrellita Star. So I feel like they're communicating. They're communicating through us in whatever ways that they can communicate with us. A lot of it is sound frequency and you're hearing the ringing in the ears. You're feeling it in your body. So, okay, let's see here. So we started with um, answering the call, right? Your creative talents, right? This new earth is coming, right? The blue star Kachina. We have Jupiter coming through with expansion. So seeing things, expanding your awareness, your consciousness. I'm seeing good luck coming. I'm seeing taking a gamble. Right, somebody get, taking a gamble and, and winning. So I'm seeing a gamble and a bet because wish fulfillment is here. It's like you had to bet on this and I'm betting on this and I'm, I, I, you win. I'm seeing winning. 
I'm seeing a new opportunity, public recognition, an important achievement, right? Traveling to somewhere. I'm seeing you have hit rock bottom and now you're finally coming to the top. This is where the recovery, uh, the recovery card came through, right? So like somebody, uh, somebody out there that had some sort of an addiction or whatever and they're recovering and they had hit rock bottom and now they're at the top. Like they, they, they are moving forward, right? With this new beginning. Um, they're writing, somebody's writing a book about love, about their life, about their childhood. Somebody's writing in general and somebody's doing higher learning, whether this is going back to school or learning something that you already know, but brushing yourself up on it. Uh, don't give up, right? I'm seeing a lot of magic. We had three magic cards, magic guardian, magic abracadabra, right? We're no longer chained to the pain of the past. We're letting go of these addictions from the past moving forward right we're having sympathy for the devil right we're having sympathy for for us we are the devil right we're having sympathy for ourselves and our past and the things that we did in our past and they are not who we are now i'm seeing the snake coming through representing the kundalini awakening i do see a lot of kundalini awakening happening hitting that crown chakra right i'm seeing two lovers um coming together they are connected now they're letting go of their self limitations right coming from a place of love they're trusting their heart they're trusting their heart they're not going to be afraid to follow their heart anymore right they have sweet thoughts this is a new beginning we have the light activation so i'm seeing a lot of light language too a lot of light language learning light language communicating in light language writing light codes i'm seeing light light frequencies i'm also seeing the sun the solar rays uh, uh, affecting our DNA, whether it's igniting new strands of our DNA, but I'm seeing the DNA being ignited, I'm seeing light. Sunat Kamara, I'm seeing a world filled with love. I can't, I, that's my vision, is a world where people love each other, respect each other, kindness. I'm seeing following our dreams, we're releasing the past, right? Recovery. We're releasing our past. We're recovering. We have the key. We have the key to move forward, to open any door. So following our dreams, the blue star, a new beginning, a new adventure awaits. Embrace it and live your dreams passionately. And three magic cards, the magic of three. So I'm seeing a lot of magic. You are the magic. Stepping into your magic. You are the magic. You are, you speak things into existence. You have the ability to manifest things into reality, right? And so this allows you to follow your dreams because you know that you will not fail. If you follow your dreams, if you follow your goals, what is in your heart, you will not fail. And oh, I'm so sweaty right now, guys. <laughs> You're so very welcome. Yes, on 8-8, the, the Lion's Portal is a huge uh, activation portal for many. I know that I activated many years ago on the Lion's Portal. So I know a lot of people also this past 8-8 have they activated as well. And they are probably looking for answers. And they're looking to what's going on. Why, why is this so weird? Because you are magic. You are tapping into your divine wisdom. You're tapping into the Atlantean knowledge, the Lemurian knowledge and wisdom that we've had. Uh, this telepathy the ability to manifest things into reality. Uh, the reason that it doesn't, it takes us longer to manifest things into reality sometimes is how we're vibrating. So the higher we vibrate, the faster things come to us because we're vibrating at that frequency. So keep your vibes up with laughter, with gratitude, right? Laughter and gratitude is the highest vibration. Tapping into your childlike playful side, that's the highest vibration. So stay in that vibe, stay in that thing and you know, unlock your magic within. Look at, unlock your magic within and where's the key? You have the key to unlock the magic within. All right, guys. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you guys have an amazing 9-9. Uh, I'll be back with you guys for the 10-10 portal of a new beginning. And we'll see how all this uh, manifested and played out in our lives. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for being here. I love you all. Infinite gratitude to you guys. You are magic. We are magic. Let's play. Bye, guys.